Boeing has their 747 series of aircraft, which acts as a double-decker, but what is the reasoning behind them not having a full double-decker aircraft like that of the Airbus A380? Stay tuned for a deep dive analysis into the topic. BBL 51 turn right, heading 180. one four Papa, turn right 245, report localised established. Boeing has been making planes for as long as I can remember, and I'm only 20 years of age. However, their 747, more commonly referred to as the Queen of the Skies, is double my age and more on top. Yet they never went ahead and built a full double-decker aircraft. Instead, choosing to build a redesigned and re-engined 747, known today as the 7478 Intercontinental. This aircraft, though, did not quite stick like that of other aircraft. Ultimately, for Boeing, there's been reasons as to why they didn't make the plunge. Let's begin at overall development costs and today's market. Even that of an industry 30 years ago, that while is very different, it still harbours some of the same key ideas that it did back then. Developing a VLA, very large aircraft, costs a lot. It therefore takes quite a fair bit to break even, and as for the Airbus A380 as an example, the aircraft was not a development or advancement generally of, say, another aircraft, like that of the A330CO to the now currently in production A330neo, or even that of the A320CO to the A320neo. It therefore costs billions upon billions for an aircraft manufacturer to go on and develop and build such an aircraft of great size. It's a risky investment for any aircraft manufacturer, that's for sure. It cost Airbus over US $25 billion to develop the world's largest passenger plane, and those costs snowballed as they do for most projects. If Boeing deems that an aircraft of such size is not required, they won't go ahead and produce it. A question that could come from this is, well, shouldn't Boeing have something to compete with it and not let Airbus steal the entire market? While the 7478 was on offer, sometimes it's a better business choice logistically to look further into the future and prepare for that, rather than, rather than the now. And as I've discussed in videos, I believe Boeing did this with their 777 aircraft that Airbus combated with a not very fuel efficient A340 for their own operations. I think in that sense, we could say that Boeing definitely judged the future better and had an aircraft that would better prepare. As we know, while the A340 definitely was seen worldwide, the 777 has had a better longevity within the industry and I would deem a better success between the two. Let's talk market now though. Big planes are a no-no nowadays. If you've watched any of my videos or keep up with the industry, this will be common knowledge to you. But if you're new and just coming across this video, four engine jets are on the way out in favour of smaller twin engine jets. Airbus is already ending production for their A380 in 2021, while the 7478 is also coming to an end. Boeing does not now see a requirement for a full double-decker aircraft and is instead looking towards the future with its 777X, an upgrade on the existing 777 and in addition its 787 Dreamliner for the future of long-haul wide-body travel. Talk of an NMA has also been around, however a double-decker aircraft dwarfs that of an NMA, but it doesn't necessarily mean it works or is more beneficial than that of a smaller aircraft, and that is something very important to mention. Earlier I discussed the ballooning effect, and it's something I want to dive a little deeper into with regards to development costs. This is a very real problem. It can go for the development of cars, boats, housing, structures, and more. Boeing experienced this with their 747 and naturally every other aircraft because, while predictions and rough estimates can most definitely take place, this makes it an even riskier investment because of the ballooning, and they very rarely will get the exact pricing right when they start off. They have to prepare for an added cost on top, and sometimes that added cost can be even higher. To build such an aircraft means to start with an almost blank blueprint as well. It means that said aircraft is also going to be susceptible to an array of future faults that can lead to cost ballooning as well. A blank blueprint also will mean that production will take a lengthy period of time as well as development. It's not as simple as re-engineering the 747. In fact, production for a full double-decker and development would take years upon years, probably close to a decade. And especially in today's market, that is not justifiable when in 10 years the industry will have changed so much. We can take a look at 2010 to 2020. While on the surface it stayed the same, there were many different changes and many advancements to the aircraft that we saw. Even in the past for Boeing, 
other problems like that of airport sizing and airlines actually having the capabilities to fly the type on their route network play a crucial role into Boeing green lighting, not just this double decker aircraft that I speak on in this video, but also any aircraft. It's as simple as if a customer doesn't want it or doesn't see the need for it, the aircraft manufacturer will not go ahead and build it and focus on something that airlines do want. It's the whole supply and demand thing over and over again. A big shout out to Finn, otherwise known as Medusa, for pledging over on Patreon. You can do so by clicking the link in the description. Thank you very much to everyone for your continued support. I really, really appreciate it. Please do take care and stay safe. And if you have any thoughts on Boeing's potential full double-decker aircraft that never came and why they didn't opt for it, drop it in the comments below. But until the next one, take care and be safe.